On November the 14th, 1940, the city of Coventry was heavily bombed. Hundreds of residents and workers lost their lives, and much of the city centre of Coventry was destroyed. The roof of the medieval cathedral church of St. Michael was hit by incendiary bombs and collapsed. Next morning, three large roof nails from the wreckage were bound together into what became the very first Coventry Cross of Nails. Here in the ruined chancel where I'm standing, my predecessor, Provost Howard, spoke the immortal words, Father, forgive. And from the following decade, these words came into regular use as the refrain in the Coventry Litany of Reconciliation. 22 years after the bombing, the new cathedral, built alongside the old, was consecrated. Since then, both cathedral buildings have ministered as one here to the city, to the wider nation, and across the world, speaking of the reality of crucifixion and destruction, but also of the hope and the possibility of rebuilding and resurrection. The original cross of nails stands in the cathedral at the high altar, but hundreds of replica crosses of nails stand also at altars and positions of prominence in other Christian organizations and churches across the world. These are the partners in the community of the cross of nails, some 250 and growing churches, schools, chaplaincies, charitable and other relief organizations, retreat centers, seminaries and memorials across five continents. This film introduces six of them. Als junge Studentin bin ich das erste Mal nach Coventry gekommen und ich hatte immer viel von Coventry gehört und habe gedacht, was ist das Besondere an Coventry und mein Freund und ich sind durch die Stadt gegangen und haben gedacht, naja, großartig anders als Kiel sieht es gar nicht aus, bis wir dann an der Kathedrale standen und dort auch nochmal nachgelesen haben, was war eigentlich alles passiert, was haben die deutschen Bomben dort angerichtet. Viele, viele Jahre später bin ich jetzt Pastorin und ich bin Pastorin an der Kirche, an der das erste Kreuz von Coventry dann auch hängt. Das ist für mich sehr bewegend. Ich kenne Menschen, die vom Krieg direkt betroffen sind, deren Familien tatsächlich in diesen kriegerischen Auseinandersetzungen sind und zwar auf verschiedenen Seiten. Die ist innerlich zerreißt und die Frage nach Versöhnung wird, ist jetzt schon und wird aber noch mal sehr dringlich werden. Wie können wir einander in die Augen sehen? Wie können wir miteinander einfach auch nur reden? Wie können wir miteinander verhandeln, was eigentlich Wahrheit ist? Das Kreuz von Coventry, das wir 1947 verliehen bekommen haben, ist das, was hinter mir ist. Dort hat es auch seinen angestammten Platz. Wir haben es einmal verliehen und in dieser Zeit haben wir eine Replik gehabt, weil wir nicht auf das Kreuz verzichten wollten. Jetzt in diesem Moment, wo wir hier die Bauarbeiten haben und unser Kreuz nicht sehen können, nutzen wir das Kreuz von Coventry, das uns in jedem Gottesdienst dann daran erinnert. Und das Zeichen der Versöhnung dann wirklich sehr präsent sein lässt, jedes Mal, wenn wir feiern. Die Nikolaikirche steht mitten in der Stadt. Sie ist geöffnet von Montag bis Sonntag. Und die Menschen kommen im Alltag und sie kommen auch an besonderen Tagen. Sie beten. Sie beten für ihre Lieben. Sie beten ganz besonders aber auch für den Frieden, gerade in dieser Zeit. Ich kenne Menschen. Menschen, die aus Russland sind, Menschen, die aus der Ukraine sind. Sie haben wiederum Verwandtschaft, Freundinnen und Freunde in beiden Ländern und ähm, sind selber ausgesprochen zerrissen innerlich, haben Sorge und Angst um ihre eigenen, ähm, um ihre eigenen Menschen natürlich auch. Und es gibt auch welche, auch die treffe ich, ähm, die dann davon sprechen, man müsse auch beide Seiten hören. Also da merke ich dann, wie weit der Weg zu einer Versöhnung dann irgendwann sein wird, wenn die Frage der Wahrheit noch gar nicht wirklich gestellt werden kann. Ich sorge mich tatsächlich auch, wie geht es weiter, wo werden wir irgendwann landen, und kann eigentlich selbst auch manchmal nur noch beten.
Augustana Hochschule in Neuendettelsau, Germany, as the Theological Seminary of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in Bavaria. Around 150 students study here to become pastors in the German Protestant Church. Eight professors and ten assistant professors teach and do research in all the classical theological disciplines. It is a campus university where professors and students teach, study and live in a Christian community. Augustana Seminary was founded in 1947, two years after the end of World War II. The founders were active in the Confessing Church, der Bekennenden Kirche, a movement of German Protestantism which resisted the attempts of the Nazi government to bring the church under control of the state. Augustana Seminary is located on the grounds of the former Neuendettelsau munitions plant. Beginning in 1934, grenades and bombs for military use were manufactured here, many of which were probably also used in the air raids over England. After the end of the war, the grounds were demilitarized and Augustana Seminary moved to the former military site. The military buildings were repurposed into lecture halls, living quarters for students, a dining hall, administration buildings and a large sports field where the students today play soccer. Later the seminary began constructing additional buildings. In 1966 the seminary chapel was built. An impressively large altar cross made of scrap munition steel connects this place of worship symbolically with the site's history. Augustana Seminary is committed to the mission of working for peace and reconciliation by means of education, intellectual exchange, spiritual communion and practical activism. The Chair of Intercultural Theology, Missiology and Religious Studies deals intensively with the dialogue between cultures and religions and focuses on post-colonial and liberation theology. The lectures and seminars in feminist theology center on gender equality and teach methods to minimize all kinds of discrimination. Our Institute for Christian Jewish Studies and Encounters is actively involved in overcoming anti-Semitism and anti-Judaism in church and society. All the other disciplines join these efforts in their own ways. Augustana Seminary has partner universities all over the world and sends German students overseas as well as receives international students on its campus for further exchange and dialogue. These partnerships are generously supported through scholarships from Mission Eine Welt, the Bavarian Center for Mission and Development. Our students also volunteer their time to work with senior citizens as well as with people with physical and mental disabilities who live in the nearby facilities operated by Diakoneo, the local Protestant social welfare institution. For the student body itself, working toward peace and social justice, creating an environment of anti-discrimination and actively counteracting climate change is paramount. On June the 25th, in 2017, Augustana Seminary was accepted into the community of the Cross of Nails. A delegation from Coventry led by Canon Dr. Sarah Hills and the German Chair Oberkirchenrat Oliver Schugraf solemnly presented and installed the Cross of Nails in the Augustana Seminary Chapel. Each November, the air raids on Coventry are commemorated 
with a prayer service in this chapel. Greetings, I'm Delene Mark from Hope Africa and we have been honoured to be part of the community of Cross of Nails for more than 20 years. Hope Africa is the social development programme for the Anglican Church of Southern Africa and we work in South Africa, Swaziland, Lesotho and Namibia. Our work involves sustainable community development in communities across these countries. We work with leadership development for clergy, bishops and lay people and we look at community-based projects that ensure food security for the vo most vulnerable. We also have gender-based um, violence uh, prevention programs um, and, and as you would see in this video we have some projects that focus on early childhood development. Thank you. This is just a thank you from Greenwood and Child Development Service Providers um, for your assistance because we started with ECD but with your help we could expand into early community and we couldn't have done it without partnering with our home Africa. So I hope this is just a small gesture but thank you for all the hearts and you know the changes that you are doing in our community which we believe or not just serve yet, but we simply put some effort in this room. And what you are doing to us, starting from an F to the end of, do it unto others as well. Working with us together in changing globally the world. Thank you. Thank you very much, Auntie F, and thank you for acknowledging Hope Africa in this way. It is our pleasure as the social development program to, to, to work in partnership with communities. And of course, early childhood development is, is very fundamental in, in alleviating poverty. Thank you very much. When we were uh, helping out our monies to, to buy a loaf of bread, five cents, and also uh, the, the operation had a soup when Magna cum laude, magna cum laude, magna 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 magna. White, welcome to the Sorrento Center. We gratefully acknowledge uh, that we live, we work, we play and we pray, we create here on the traditional and unceded territory of Swepnikulu, the land of the Swepnik people since time immemorial, who practiced virtues of generosity and harmony. And those are the virtues that we seek to live into today here at the Sorrento Center.
The Sorrento Center was honored to be welcomed into the community of the Cross of Nails in 2019. We've embraced the three-part journey of reconciliation, heal the wounds of history, celebrate difference and diversity, build a culture of justice and peace. There's 1.8 million indigenous peoples in this country, and there's 11 different language families. And within those language families, there's over 50 different languages. And so there are many different ways of practicing indigenous law as you go from coast to coast to coast. But one thing that I find very um, common amongst them is the respect for the land, the relationship to the land, um, how we find our patterns for living from the land. And so one thing I want to leave with you is the idea that our law professors are the animals and the birds and the plants and the trees and the winds and the sun and the waves and the fire. That is, we have this methodology, I'm gonna describe it this way in Anishinaabemwin, which is to point towards and take direction from. We draw our analogies from our elders, our teachers, our professors, who are those that preceded us as human beings. Right? The trees and the rocks and the waves and the winds and the animals and the plants and the birds. Right? They are elders, they are teachers about what patterns are appropriate. We can analogize those. And then we can also, of course, distinguish ourselves from those things that we find uh, uh, different in the way that we're living. And that process of analogy and distinguishing learning from the land is a process that's encoded in the language. And it's found in the stories. The principles are found in those stories. The processes are found in those stories. It's in the songs. Law can be danced. Right? As, as someone dances to life one of their dreams or one of those stories, particularly if in a feasting tradition on the coast, you don blankets and masks and you tell about what your standards, principles, authority, criteria, measures, signposts, guideposts, um, principles, processes for making decisions and resolving disputes. Hildegard of Bingham reminds us that there is the music of heaven in all things. And so one of the great journeys of reconciliation here at the Sorrento Center is to engage humans more deeply in the world around us. We are not uh, apart from the world, but we are a part of the world around us. Hildegard talks about veriditas, the greening force of the divine woven through all of nature. And that's something we seek to explore and live into here at the Serono Center. Our school has about 310 children from more than 10 nations. Religious education takes place in four forms, Catholic, Protestant, Orthodox, and Muslim. Our school is since 2015 an icon school, and we are very proud about it. What we do is to make reconciliation a part of life of us. We play together, we help each other, we try to speak to each other correctly. We have lots of projects, the charity meal, peace walk through the village, we send some letters to the seven children in Germany, we have sent reconciliation litany to the Pope Francis, we had a peace concert and much more. 
That's who we are. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. All have been and the Son of God has been Hello, I'm from Guy's and St Thomas's NHS Foundation Trust and from the Chaplaincy team. So Guy's and St Thomas's is a series of large hospitals in central London um, and we cover lots and lots of different um, illnesses etc. And the Chaplaincy team is a big multi-faith and belief diverse team. It's people from, um, from obviously different parts around the United Kingdom. Um, they also come from Europe, different countries within Europe, different countries within Asia, Africa, Australasia, or Oceania. Um, and we are also people from North America as well. So there's loads of different people within the team and lots of different faith and belief communities. And we've struggled a lot over the past few years because we've had um, various different things like um, terrorist attacks right on our doorstep. Um, there was very sadly a terrorist attack on Westminster Bridge um, where lots of people were killed, lots of people were injured and one of our own patients died in that terrorist attack. And then we had um, a terrorist attack, in fact two, at London Bridge um, and very, very sadly, one of our nurses was killed in one of those attacks. We're also the chaplaincy team for the London Fire Brigade. And in recent years, we had the awful, awful event at Grenfell Tower, when so many people were killed. And we've had many other awful events that we've helped and supported firefighters through. So all of these events made it really hard for us as a chaplaincy team to try and come to terms with some of the trauma that we had seen as chaplains and as people representing different faith and belief communities. And also um, in our work, how to help the staff and the patients as part of our hospitals and also the firefighters in the London Fire Brigade, how to reconcile what they've seen with their lives and with the future how to cope with the effect it had on compassion and compassion fatigue, post-traumatic stress, burnout, and the real impact it has on our morality and our theology and the, the moral distress that has caused so many people. And so we decided as part of our active way of coping with all of these traumas was to join the Community for the Cross of Nails as part of a Christian organisation and also Together for Hope, the reconciliation um, wing which is for faith and belief communities. And we as an organisation, as a chaplaincy team, have, all, have decided to uh, join both of those and we're so glad that we have. 
We've trained as a team as reconcilers so that we can help people begin to understand and process some of the real traumatic events that they've been through. And also what we're going to do ourselves is begin to work out how can we help people? What are the outcome measures? What are the ways that we can see that we may have actually helped people? And so it's actually beginning to look through some of the theology and some of the psychology of these events and of our work. It's called evidence-based chaplaincy. And becoming part of these organisations helps us for the future for that as well. So it's helped us in terms of organising events. It's helped us when we have um, another event that is really bad, COVID. We've just come right the way through COVID and we're still in it. But right at the very beginning, this hospital was at the epicentre of what happened for COVID. And right outside our hospital, we have the COVID memorial wall. And so COVID is part and parcel of our past few years and of our future. And as in fact, there are many infectious diseases. How can we come to terms with all of this? How can we process it? And how can we come through and be even more resilient and stronger and be able to help others? So we're really glad that we're part of the Community for the Cross of Nails and indeed of Together for Hope. And we hope it will go for a long way in the future. Forgiving one another as God in Christ forgave you. 